It's like what what do you think yeah. in your own theory? What do you think happened to him? So I have I have a couple theories about this. Um, I think. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video with Cobra Kai Season 5 dropping in just one month's time on September 9th. Today is the day that we finally get a huge leak, uh, not even a leak as I mean the showrunners themselves, the big three posted this photo as well as a few others and we're going to go over it today. So not to put this one at the end, I'm going to put it right at the front and let's get to talking about it right away. So <laughs> right here, I, mean, I can't believe I'm seeing this. We got Sean Kanan returning in Cobra Kai Season 5 as Karate's bad boy. Mike Barnes is back in business, baby, and my question is, is this going to be some sort of a just, you know, little quick cameo, he's not going to have a major part in the show, or is this going to be the start of something that will have him as a recurring role in the next several seasons if we get them? Is he going to be in the rest of the show? And I remember when I interviewed Sean Kanan a few years ago, he of course didn't allude to ever being in Cobra Kai or anything like that, and heck, I don't, I don't even know if he was reached out to by then, but lo and behold, we actually have confirmation that he's now in it. So, okay, if you haven't seen my videos regarding how I feel Mike Barnes will play into Cobra Kai Season 5, you can go check those out because I've made a bunch. But I briefly want to say, before we get to the other photos here, because there are about 12 of them in total, there are one of two ways, well, there, there are two ways that we could have Mike Barnes return. He could either be completely against Terry Silver, he could be completely with Terry Silver, you know, Terry Silver could go up to him and be like, hey, remember me? And of course, his first reaction is probably going to be, get the hell out of here, I'm going to kick your ass. Because let's face it, Terry Silver completely dodged him and essentially made him lose against Daniel. You know, Mike Barnes was beating him very easily, and Terry Silver was like, just play around with him. And that's eventually what opened up the whole thing to Daniel doing the kata, which confused Mike Barnes, and then he won the winning point. Now, if it wasn't for Terry Silver giving him the wrong advice or as Arnold would say, the wrong advices, then well, Cobra Kai would be a different story. Terry Silver, John Kreese, and Mike Barnes would go on to make so many different dojos throughout the valley. And heck, maybe even throughout the country. But it was that one event in Karate Kid 3 that changed the course of history as we know it. So what is going on here in this photo? Well, it looks like Mike Barnes is looking dapper. He's in some sort of a suit or a vest suit. It almost looks like a gi, but you can tell that he's, you know, it's got a collar and he's, he's, he's at some sort of event. Now, the background here, it looks like some sort of a posh place. This could be Terry Silver's crib. He could have been invited to Terry Silver's place without knowing that it is Terry Silver. Maybe, you know, he's, maybe he's a painter and he was invited to some big rich guy's place to sell his paintings and he finds out that this big rich guy when he arrives is Terry Silver. I don't know. Or it could be that he's taken Terry Silver's offer and this is a new offer where Terry Silver says, hey look, uh, we are about to open up so many Cobra Kai dojos just like in the 80s and I know I kind of screwed you on the deal, but how about you join me and I'll give you X amount of dollars and I give you a percentage of the company. Mike Barnes could either say, okay, you got it, or he could say, get the hell out of my face. And we could see a showdown between Mike Mike and Terry Silver. If that were to happen, either Mike Barnes leaves the show and that's it, it was just a quick little cameo, or he ends up joining Daniel and Johnny. Because he's probably had like decades of anger and resentment towards Terry Silver, and he just really hates the guy. And now that he's back in his life and he sees Cobra Kai showing up all over the valley, then maybe he's going to do everything he can to get rid of him. Now remember, Mike Barnes is not from the valley. So whatever happens, Mike Barnes is probably going to have to be flown in by Terry Silver, or Terry's going to go and track him down. It also seems like Mike is settled down and married, which, I mean, if, if he's anything like he was in the old days, in the 80s, it's got to be a pretty special wife, or he's completely turned a new leaf and he's onto a new side of life. Either way, I'm extremely excited to see Mike Barnes return. Go check out my interview with Sean Kanan. He's an awesome guy and he just launched his new book, The Way of the Cobra. I'm going to go over the other pictures in another video, so be sure to be on the lookout for that video as well. I'm very happy that Sean Kanan is confirmed to be back. Mike Barnes is one of my favorite villains of the Karate Kid franchise, and I'd love to know more about him. You know, I'd love to know what happened to him after Cry to Kid 3, and what was his upbringing like, you know? Uh, if you want to hear more about that, or, or at least Sean Kanan's theory about his character, you can go check out the interview, which I'll link below. Have an awesome rest of your day, everyone. Thanks for watching this video, and we have one month left until Cobra Kai Season 5. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, remember, pain does not exist in this dojo.
does it. When we met him, he was a 17 year old kid. Yeah. What, what, what became of him as an adult? What happened? And that's after something he lost. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure uh, 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 Terry Silver and Kreese were probably pretty pissed that he lost the tournament and all that stuff. Right. So it's like, and it, it, right. it shaped, it literally shaped Cobra Kai in the Valley. It's like, what, what do you think yeah. in your own theory? What do you think happened to him? So I have, I have a couple theories about this. Um, I think one path that he could have taken was he literally became, you know, a worse guy, got in more worse trouble yeah. and, and quite possibly wound up uh, in prison. Yeah. Okay. Another idea that I have, and I, I kind of like this one a lot more because I think it's a lot less obvious, is I think maybe he got in trouble and maybe he was given the choice of either – you know, going to prison or going into the military, okay. and he went and and you know uh, it, it straightened him out, and he he became actually an honorable, good guy or a better man, and uh, you know um, probably went off and fought in some of the uh, uh, you know the wars in in uh, you know uh, Baghdad, Afghanistan, etc., right. um, and got himself pretty straightened out. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I think that would be interesting is because if you remember, there's there's the dialogue between Terry Silver and Mr. Miyagi where they're talking about how they were both soldiers. Right. And Terry Silver says something to the effect of, you know, John John wasn't always like that. Yeah. And this war does that to a man. And uh, uh, he says, you would have had to been there. And then Mr. Miyagi replies, you know, have yeah. been, do know. So I, I think it'd be interesting that that in that sense, Mike would be the other side of the coin of kind of the same experience that John Kreese went through. And I think it'd be interesting if he came back and he, he wasn't a bad guy. And and his his beef was wasn't with Johnny Lawrence, uh, but it was with uh, and it wasn't even with with Ralph with, uh, with you know, Daniel, with Daniel yeah. Bruce, but it was with it was with Kreese. Yeah, uh, that would be interesting. And then just for comedic value, cool. I think it's funny. Like he he wound up going to an ashram, and he's like, you know, Mister Beads and Puka shells. Oh and, my god! You know, Could you imagine? peace, love, and understanding? Yeah, that's right. Funny. He's like just totally you know? flipped the script. The, the, re the reason I think that's funny is you know the guys, uh, you know, Josh Held and Hayden, and uh, uh, you know all the guys that. that uh, John Hurts, they've got such great comedic sensibilities. They they did Harold and Kumar, of course, yeah. and you know I, I I could also see them creating something like that it being really funny. And then Mike would maybe snap out of it and be like, "What the hell?" And he sees Crease, right. and it's like right. all of a sudden just boom, right, switches. Right. Yeah, because that's true. It's like he's probably a I don't know if he was a good kid, but like he might have just had some bad influences. And then you know Crease and Silver definitely weren't the best influences to have. Right, and also if you look at how Silver took Daniel under his wing and initially was pretending to be his mentor, right. every reason to believe that, you know, Terry Silver, who was an adult and a wealthy and powerful guy, was probably playing, you know, all sorts of manipulative mind games with Mike, too, albeit in a different, you know, with, with a different uh, delivery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. I, I wonder if they're going to put... Uh... Thomas Ian Griffith in there in, in Cobra Kai. That'd be pretty cool.